The basic premise when analyzing Russian politics is that it is a police state, the only institution of uh, significance in that country is a secret police called the FSB and SDR, which I call the KGB, a faction. American intelligence agencies are to conduct a major investigation into how the Kremlin is infiltrating political parties in Europe. It can be revealed. James Clapper, the U.S. Director of National Intelligence, has been instructed by the U.S. Congress to conduct a major review into Russian clandestine funding of European parties over the last decade. I'd just like to say that I were, I'm reading Kotkin's biography of Stalin and in there is a finance minister during the early Stalin dictatorship called Sokolnikov. But this person was tried to implement the new economic policy in Russia and he was so zealous that when he went abroad he he always spent less money than was assigned to him Sokolnikov he ended his life murdered in 1939 in a concentration camp in the Gulag. And that's how these parties who are taking money from Russia will end up the, the people in these parties if Russia ever overtakes Europe instead of NATO. The view reflects mounting concerns in Washington over Moscow's determination Washington has to examine, <laughs> I mean, the CIA has to examine the funding of the European uh, Union parties from, uh, from, the, uh, from the KGB. This is how strong the European security uh, services are. The, re the review reflects mounting concerns in Washington over Moscow's determination to exploit European disunity in order to undermine NATO, block US missile defense programs, and revoke the punitive economic sanctions regime imposed after the annexation of Crimea and aggression against Ukraine, I should add. This is not annexation, this is an action. The U.S. move came as senior British government officials told the telegraph of growing fears that a new Cold War was now unfolding in Europe, with Russian meddling taking on a breadth, range and depth far greater than previously thought. It really is a new Cold War out there, the source said. Right across the EU, we are seeing alarming evidence of Russian efforts to unpick the fabric of European unity on a whole range of vital strategic issues. It is a clever game. There are unwritten rules between nation states, and these rules are clearly being violated by the Russian side, says. Dr. Igor Sutyagin, Royal United Services Institute. A dossier of Russian influence activity seen by the Sunday Telegraph identified Russian influence operations running in France, the Netherlands, Hungary, as well as Austria and the Czech Republic, which has been identified by Russian agents as an entry point into the Schengen Free Movement zone. Whereas Germany, Ms. Tanmeyer, is clearly a KGB officer. 
The U.S. Intelligence Review will examine whether Russian security services are funding parties and charities with the intent of undermining political cohesion, fostering agitation against the NATO missile defense program, and undermining attempts to find alternatives to Russian energy. Officials declined to say which parties could come into the probe, but it is thought likely to include far-right groups including Jobbik in Hungary, Golden Dawn in Greece, the Northern League in Italy, and France's Front National, which received a 9 million euro loan from a Russian bank in 2014. Other cases of possible Moscow-backed destabilization being monitored by diplomats includes extensive links in Austria, including their visit by Austrian MPs to Crimea to endorse its annexation, as well as cases of Russian spies discovered using Austrian paper. Russian influence has also been detected in a referendum in the Netherlands next April over whether to block the EU's closer relations with Ukraine. Sources said arguments deployed in support of the referendum closely resembled known Russian propaganda. Russian desire to influence politics in Britain is also in the ascendant, sources said, as the Kremlin eyes the forthcoming EU referendum and the election of Jeremy Corbyn as Labour leader as potential opportunities to weaken Europe. Igor Sutyagin, the Russia specialist at the Royal United Services Institute, Russi said that Russia's propaganda machine was currently very active, deploying what security experts call hybrid warfare that blends conventional military power with guerrilla tactics and cyber warfare. The Russian campaign exists in a grey area, operating covertly and often legally to avoid political blowback, but with a clear aim of weakening Western will to fight, maturing doubts over NATO, the EU, Trident and economic sanctions, he said. It's a clever game. These, there are unwritten rules between nation states, and these rules are clearly being violated by the Russian side. But they know the West cannot ban them without harming their own values of freedom of expression. Analysts have noticed how Russia today, the Kremlin-controlled television channel, which operates in Britain, gave extensive and very positive coverage of Mr. Corbyn's leadership campaign. It covered six of his public rallies and speeches, which it did not do for rival candidates. In an unprecedented intervention in Britain's domestic affairs, Alexander Yakovenko, the Russian ambassador to London, hailed Mr. Corbyn's election as a radical breakthrough. <laughs> he hailed the election as a democratic mandate for his platform of, quote, opposition to military interventions of the West, support of the UK's nuclear disarmament, conviction that NATO has outstayed its raison d'etre with the end of the Cold War, just to name a few. Andrew Foxall, director of the Russian Center at the Henry Jackson Society think tank, said Russia has become more audacious in its approach as it attempts to fight off the Crimea sanctions. What is this Henry Jackson society? Let's look at the Wikipedia. It's a British think tank 
It is named after the American politician Henry M. Jackson, the late Democratic senator and anti-communist defense force. Wonderful person. Born in Everett. Both parents were immigrants from Norway. No one is suggesting that Corbyn is on the payroll of the Kremlin at all, simply that his interests demonstrably overlap with the, what the Kremlin is saying. Russia has ramped up its influencing policy and is trying to achieve in six months or a year what it previously took a decade to achieve. Wherever the opportunity presents itself, Russia wants to undermine the West to present the argument that the West is no better than they are. It wants to see an end of the European Union because it much prefers a policy of divide and rule. Relations between Moscow and London have been in the diplomatic deep freeze for more than a decade and are likely to chill a few more degrees this week with a publication of a public inquiry into murder of Alexander Litvinenko, a former Russian agent who claimed asylum in Britain. The inquiry was charged with identifying who was responsible for the poisoning of Mr. Litvinenko in London in 2006 using radioactive polonium 210 and is widely expected to point the finger at the Kremlin. The UK has recently taken steps to combat Russian meddling. In August, the Russian embassy claimed that the Home Office had effectively forced out four of its diplomats by refusing to extend their visas. Among them was Sergei Nelobin, a familiar face on the Westminster drink circuit was associated with the Conservative Friends of Russia, a pro-Russian group backed by several prominent MPs that dissolved in 2012 after questions emerged over its neutrality. Mr. Nelobin was previously stationed in Venezuela and is now thought to be working at the Foreign Ministry in Moscow. Russia also took an active interest in the Scottish referendum, which threatened Britain's trident base at Faslane, and which was given extensive coverage on Russia today. Afterwards, Russia claimed that the count was flawed, and suggested the result was rigged. UKIP has also faced scrutiny, given that Nigel Farage and other senior staff have praised Mr. Putin and accused the EU of provoking Russia's annexation of Crimea. However, there is no evidence of any direct contacts between the Parsi and Russian officials. Very interesting stuff. Immigrants must improve English in two and a half years or face deportation, says David Cameron. Well now, we have five minutes more of today's program, so we are going to go to my page Geopolitical Times of God geopoliticaltimes.com to see uh, some news about Russia. I thought I'd make a video concerning uh, concerning uh, China because I, 
I am preparing how China has ruled a great, uh, a great new uh, thing. Uh, oh yes, I'm proud of. There was an interesting article today that America is destroying Russia with uh, with a. Putin is the only chance for the West to survive, says Pravda. The West wants to crush Russia with the help of artificially created economic difficulties. <laughs> Another Stalin to come to power after Putin, let's see. Who writes this stuff? What were the main results of the year 2015? What was the most important event of the year? Pravda.ru asked these questions of the editor-in-chief of National Defense Magazine, I Igor Korotchenko. So they s the Pravda says that another Stalin is to come to power after Putin. In Russia, all the talk about the need of reviving friendship with the West has gone into the background. Such opinions are shared by very few marginals, whose reputation in the country is the lowest of the lowest. Russian, quote, liberals and, quote, middle classes are not willing to fulfill the revolutionary dream of Putin. Western ill wishes. Western politicians can very well See, the, Russia has been changing a lot during Putin's presidency. Yes, while the price of oil was high. They can see that the Russian people do not want another Yeltsin, let alone Stalin, to come to power. Today, the West prefers to put the pressure of economic sanctions on Russia. This pressure definitely hurts. Russian economy because it is a part of global economy. The West needs to understand that President Putin is the only chance to come to an agreement with Russia. One may recollect what Western Victoria states did to Germany after it was defeated in World War I. France, Belgium, Denmark, Poland and others were eating up Germany slowly, chunk by chunk, asking to, for unimaginable reparations. Soon afterwards, Germany's humiliation produced a phenomenon of Adolf Hitler, who, who take revenge on Europe. Oh my God! We would like to remind Western policymakers that Russia's history of building democracy counts only 25 years. There are many of those who feel nostalgic about the strong hand. Who knows, maybe the West will soon feel nostalgic about Putin's Munich speech from 2007, when it irrevocably lost the opportunity to come to an agreement with Russia. Do you think that Obama allowed exports of American oil for the first time in 40 years for no particular reason? Do you think that Saudi Arabia decided to increase oil production for no particular reason? They all want to do what they did to the Soviet Union in the past. They want to collapse the oil mar market like in the uh, late 80s, create economic problems and then convert economic protests into political slogans to replace the sitting Russian administration with the puppets whom we already know very well. This is the ultimate goal of our Western partners. Says, I'm happy that we already understand this technology, how it works and how to react to it. I'm convinced that we are absolutely capable of overcoming all these economic difficulties to become a stronger country. 